So I went for a little trip to St. Catharines and I was thinking of what gear am I going to bring so I decided to go with the little Acme Boy Action 4 and I brought the Panasonic G92 with the Leica 200mm Prime and a 1.4x teleconverter for some wildlife and it got me thinking was that the ideal setup? Tiny little action cam for vlogging and something else for wildlife or should I have just brought a lens like this and then one camera, two lenses type of deal. So we talk a little G9 versus DJI versus GoPro versus everything else. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Okay, first things first, we're on the Panasonic G9 II with the Leica 8 to 18, 2.8 to 4, with an ND on there and no digital stabe, so it should be terrible. So far, this whole video should be bullshit. Let's switch into electronic stabe and see if it fixes the warpy heaven. Okay, electronic stabilization on standard. Perfect backgrounds now, GoPro level stay, but with some dignity. So first the first thing I noticed on my vlog, I just brought the DJI Action 4 and everything was shot on that. It was good, it was decent. No, my face is not in focus, but it sure was easy. Very stable footage, very clear, 4K, nice. You're stuck with one focal length, but okay. But I made the mistake of switching over to the Fuji and then I was like, oh damn, yeah, that's why you bring a bigger camera. It just looks so nice and pleasant. And it's like, the real answer is there's a place for both. Big mirrorless camera. It's sad that I have to say the Micro Four Thirds camera is big and heavy, but it's full frame sized. So like there's a place for this, a little nice creativity and slow motion with dignity or the action cam look. You notice my arms, I have like action cam nipples right now. It's really annoying. I have a lot of thoughts on this little DJI Action 4. It's so nice, but not nice at all. Let's switch on over to it. G9, you've been nice. Fantastic little vlogging setup, in focus all the time, even with sunglasses, oh my God, so stable. Wow, you fixed everything pretty much, except the slow motion 300 frames would have to be manual focus. You think I can see the screen in this light? I can't see a damn thing. Am I in focus? I can't even see it. Well, that's a problem. Whereas Sony, I just point and wonder what magic awaits me when I get home a lot. You want to see real wonder? Watch this pan. This is the cinema. Oh my God. storytelling behind that. My grandfather going to shop for me even though he's disabled. So kind of him. So let's pay attention to see if we notice a huge image degradation when we switch over to the DJI Action 4 and if it's a problem. Okay, first thing you're gonna notice is a change in audio quality. Same exact microphone plugged in. You know DJI just, I, they changed something with this new firmware. They now have like a really large meter instead of that tiny microphone. Right now I'm entering like yellow territory, but not red, so I should not be clipping. But one annoying thing, have you seen a difference? Is this worse? Probably not even, it's worse. I noticed that I had to set the gain and it was annoying. You can't really feel it as you're in the gain setting menu. You're at minus six and you're talking, but there's no meter there. You have to exit the meter and then DJI considers letting you not wet the bed. Why, hello to you, low light. So like the audio is a bit annoying to set. I really wish we could do auto gain with external audio. How come we can't do that? Just like set it and forget it. That's why I love my phone, because the audio is always max loudness. I never have to tweak anything. Whereas most of my videos, like each clip's like, that's so low, okay, up. Really annoying. Not as annoying as not having a cage without a lens cap. So like, as you can see, probably not great detail, this has a lens cap. So I could throw it in my bag if I'm not using it. When I pull it off, I'm not worried about touching the lens. There's only one thing that makes a difference in your image quality, fingerprints. 
and it's like you have to carry a cloth you might as well wear shirts made of that material because you're going to be doing it but dji is so tiny i know i'm being harsh on you just because i found flaws and i want to tell my homeboys about them if you're thinking of buying this thing through my affiliate links you should know what you're getting into it's like there's no cage right now that lets you put filters on and i did have to buy a little 3.5 mil mic jack it's a dongle bitch and i spent so much time researching left wing jacks for lav mics and now it's a stupid thing because it's like straight down and then off to the side and then there's bridges and shit i hate you so much but it works right but i've been wondering is this really better than my gopro i do like using it more it seems more simple but the not having oh but what the hell was that i brought the 60 mil olympus macro i'm gonna try to get some crazy stuff with the g9 in here oh you wait for that video you're not gonna wait but the main advantage of the dji is it's much lighter than this cage and audio adapter setup it would be lighter than the media mod as well which you could not put filters on, so don't even think of that. Let's switch on over to the GoPro. What is that sound? Something new and magical. Why didn't I bring the Leica 200 Prime? Wait. So backlit and right now. Let's switch to the GoPro. Now, while I'm technically in the same position with the backlit and scenario, the clouds have ruined my life once again. It's not the first time. But you see this little dongle bitch Oh, that thing's dangling and dongling all day long. And to put this back on its backpack clip, I have to be more careful than anyone trying to steal a diamond, like that I don't touch the lens. And it's very awkward, it's so annoying. Where is this thing? It's actually quite annoying that I have to re-dig out my lens cap and put it back on, but the fact that I could, that's nice. I'm not gonna lie to you. And the full body vlogs, that is something not a lot of people do these days. But I'll be honest with you, I don't like having too many different setups that do the same thing. So like we have the GoPro 11 and DJ Action 4, I kind of want one of them get rid of the other. I don't like having multiple different battery scenarios and charging. This one didn't come with a charger by the way, thanks DJI. So I have to buy a new charger and like three more batteries hobo life but gopro has its faults too if you're trying to vlog like i know my computer is getting old it's 2019 technology that wasn't even new in that year and so like this 5.3k that we're in right now the nicest looking profile for gopro it's hard to edit it chugs along it's annoying it's not enjoyable in fact let's switch out of it but it doesn't look as nice in 4k now we're in 4k and you've probably noticed something's off with it right it's not because 5.3k is like super high resolution that's the best bro go for 8k next it's not that it's something about using the full sensor whereas gopro's 4k mode is like line skipped or something and it's off it's less contrasty like everything about it is off i don't know man i don't know which one of you i hate more gopro 11 or 4 boy I think the GoPro 12 probably better than this with the log. I don't know. Every time I see a side by side, I still prefer the GoPro image. GoPro colors being better, that's not good. One cool thing about the action cams is they got that hyperlapse mode. That's really fun sometimes. You're going through a forest, it's all purpley and fun. Or like you're just rushing through a street. It's kind of cool. I noticed GoPro's way more stable than DJI. I don't know what happened there with the DJ. I'm actually quite curious to see if the Panasonic G9 II could do a hyperlapse now that it has electronic stabilization on high. Dare you dream we try that? seen the footage yet so i have no idea if it's usable or not but did you like the zooms as i was walking by but like, i zoomed in from 8 to 18 and then back out at some point 
That was the cinema. Maybe. But I got to tell you, I really enjoyed that vlog. Once it was all put together, going to St. Catharines, just like going through the farmer's market and then out through nature and filming with the G92 and the Leica 200 mil. I have a whole video of footage coming on that. It was just like beauty. Like I'm proud of videos like that. So when I travel to different cities, like that's what I want to bring. A mirrorless with a telephoto and then an ultra wide vlogging scenario. And the ultimate debate is, do you just get a wide lens for your wildlife cam or bring the extra action cam, which would weigh lighter than, what the hell is that? Would weigh lighter than the lens anyway, maybe. But it's these low light scenarios, like cloudy days that make the GoPro look like a piece of trash. Let's switch to the phone and listen to the super compressed audio, but I don't have to touch it. I love it. <laughs> Huawei P40 Pro color science cannot be beat. It can be. It's so bad. Oh, I hate phones so much. You know, I was looking up to see if the P70 Pro was coming anytime soon. Just a bunch of fake rumors. But like, this is the P40 Pro. There is a 50 and a 60 out already. And both of them are worse than this. This does HD 960 frames per second. The newest 60 Pro does 480. And if you want 960, that's now 720p resolution. Sensor's not bigger. It's actually smaller in the wide lens. A lot of problems ahead. Like you get nothing. 7,000 frames, that's cut in half to 3,000 and probably looks worse. Phones are the best and they're terrible poisonous berries it's just phones are so over sharpened these days i want to upgrade this would be the ultimate solution because i bring the phone with me i gotta call my girlfriend i have a map on here that i'm gpsing my way through forests and shit the phone like obviously that is your answer not for wildlife but for vlogging and this has my slow-mo i could make some stuff but it's so ugly so fugly looking and all the like what you would think is an upgrade to this phone has worse slow motion technology and it's bullshit it's been a while since we vlogged on this phone let's switch this is the main lens it's like super tone i gotta extend it on out there but i can put that thing right here with the tripod on it because it has a side clip that's just an advantage of the ergonomics so let's switch to the wide lens it's been so long since i've even seen it i miss it Oh, the wideness. The wideness is real. Oh, man. Even though we're in the darkness, this sensor, it's still actually smaller than the DJI sensor now that they've upped their game. But, like, for a while, this was the biggest sensor even in the ultra-wide lens, which is an 18 mil, and now the new models have, like, 13. Stupid wide. This is already, like, way too wide. Do companies not see that? 18 mil wide enough asshole and we get some tonnet with a big sensor and beautiful color science all right back on the main cam and then let's switch back to the g9 to wrap it up switch back to something nice and pleasant in the dark dungeons of the forest oh penny boy penny boy to the rescue it's just something about having an actual camera nothing's fake it's just real quality image coming straight at you. It's like all these action cams and phones, they're all fake and over sharp. And these are getting better. The DJI, you can lower the sharpness now. It's an okay image, but I'm not in focus. And that's annoying. Whenever I switch to it, it's like, yeah, the focus is about 15 feet that way. That's annoying. So whatever. I think if you're being serious about making like actual nice things on your vlog, you get the lightest possible pennant boy why didn't you make a light body with all the same specs shrink it down and then the like a nine mil you're done and then a 100 to 300 mark ii that's to 24 not like a budget lens a new premium that over surpasses everything you have then like i'm in your ballpark but if not panty boy then you're looking at fuji for magic but then they got no stape 
and it's unusable. You can't actually walk anywhere in your footage. You have to do clips here. Hey man, I'm in a forest. I found some stairs. They help you lose weight. I'm here at the last known location of Bigfoot. He dug a hole here to sleep, but it only fit one of his feet. Oh boy, how's the stay? Bad, Fuji? Yeah. You know, the funniest thing about this whole conundrum, it's not even DJI's fault that companies aren't making the proper cage that holds filters. What are they supposed to do? It's not like GoPro came out with a nice cage. That was Ulanzi. And for some reason, they can't because they chose too wide of a lens. That's my thought. It's my theory. Okay, before that loser signs off with utterly useless advice for mankind, I do have an actual useful test available to us. We're back on the DJI Action 4. GoPro's Glimmer Glass, 52 mil, I believe. How big of a cage would need to be? You're good. You're good with a little 52. This could be mine. You losers. Oh, Ulanzi, I blame you. Let me put it right on there. Get the hand out of the shot, you loser, your stupid wide lens. And then we have glimmer-like skies. Don't we? Do we have anything? But it takes away the action cam look. This could be ours. If one of you would get to work in your blacksmith cave, shield weld something out of metal, you piece of shit. So what are your thoughts? I don't know that we actually learned anything today other than Mirrorless is obviously better than action cam, but there's a place for having just a tiny thing with you. It makes traveling so much easier. And you could skip the wildlife and just bring this, and you can make fun stuff. So light, wow. But it's nice to have some cinema in your life, and you be in control, and you can zoom. Ah. Unbelievable. So the conundrums are real. Let me know your thoughts down below what you would choose to vlog with. Penny Boy, Fuji, Canon, no, Sony, ooh, huh, I'll leave, you buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt, you're not, subscribe for my website.